Hi, I'm Peter J. Ray. Welcome to Adventures in History. Today's topic is Dearest Mother and Dad, Love, Ruth, John, Mark, Pamela, Patricia, and Peter, 1969, Part 157. 20689 Beechliff Boulevard, Rocky River, Ohio, February 21, 1969. Dear Mother and Dad, Four weeks from yesterday, we'll be in the Bahamas, and by the time you receive this, it will be just three weeks until you'll be here. There seems so much to be done before then that I always wonder how I'll ever make it, but the time always comes to leave, and we go even if some things remain undone. I had really hoped to have a new kitchen for you by the time we left. Thought it would be a good deadline to have, but won't make it now. Too bad that I had to waste so much time being sick November and December, but wonderful that I feel so great now. I felt so much better since our trip in January to the Bahamas, and to think that I felt so bad that I thought I'd never make it onto the plane. If it hadn't been for John, I'd have stayed in bed that week and still not be feeling any better. We are so glad that we accepted Kent Meyer's invitation to go on his yacht. We flew back, then stayed another week, but left the boat for Dave Myers, his son, also in the law firm, and they came back with the captain on a 58-foot yacht. They said it was just as rough coming back. Dave Myers went down and sailed in a race from the Gulf side of Florida down around the tip and up to Fort Lauderdale. He said it was so rough he had been scheduled in several more races, several more weekends throughout the spring, and he decided it was too rugged and bowed out of them. We were so glad we'd made the trip with Kent and Betty Myers. Kent Kent had some bad stomach pains during the trip and went to the doctor on his return and was tested. Found something in his intestines, cancer, malignant, and this morning at 8 o'clock a.m. went into surgery. It's now about 11 o'clock a.m. and I'm at the beauty parlor. The operation would last about four hours, so we're all praying for him. At the best, he'll be out eight weeks, and we're wondering just what they'll find. John is taking over all his cases. John just finished the fifth trial since we returned. This thing with Kent Myers will really hurt the office. Kent is such a youthful, vigorous, 66 years old. Patty is home this morning with an upset stomach. Too bad since she has her piano recital tonight. Certainly hope she feels better by tonight. We were so thrilled. Last Saturday was Pamela's cello solo in the Solo and Ensembles Music Contest, and she got an I or a one. I listened to them all, and Mr. Wesneski's three pupils were by far the best. All three got I's, the best score. Most of the others, others weren't too good. I was very proud of Pamela. She had a fisherman's knit sweater on with big wood, wooden buttons, and she was afraid they'd hit the cello, so she was trying to hold it away from her. But she played very confidently and well. Holly Dreger accompanied her and also did well, but only got a two on her own violin solo. Tomorrow, Mark will play his violin solo in Euclid on the east side, and Holly will also accompany him. We have to leave about 7.30 a.m., It'll be hard to get up because we are going to a formal dance at the Lakewood Country Club tonight after Patty's piano recital. I'm picking John up at 3 this afternoon so he can drive Mark to take his driver's test. He got a 95. Pamela's going on a Girl Scout weekend. Last Sunday she made Valentine cakes, collected books, games, and magazines, and John drove four of the girls to an old men's home. They were quite shook up to see so many sad, vacant old men. They hoped to do more. Even John was shaken. Thank you for the dress. I thought you'd just bring it. How about the pink Ireland smocked ones Doris has, or are they still using them? Hope so. Please be sure to leave enough room in your luggage. Bring extra space if possible so you can take things back. How about these wooden boxes you mailed the plates in? You probably will want to take some straw things back from the straw market in Nassau, too. Be sure to bring some of those summer dresses. Hope you've shortened them. 
Also a bathing suit and hat and a smock or beach robe of some kind. Also some sweaters. Wednesday, February 26th. We just returned from the church Lenten Supper film and discussion. They took two to three feet out of Kent Myers' intestines, malignant cancer, and it had perforated the walls so possibly spread. He's very sick. Mark passed his temporary driver's test with a 95. We had a wonderful time at the dinner dance and going to another formal dinner dance at the Clifton Club Saturday night. Mark and Pamela are in another concert Friday night, and John and Peter have a camp out, and Sunday night we attend the Cleveland Orchestra. I went to the Home and Flower Show. So lovely to see all the spring gardens and flowers in bloom. I have more for Scythia out. We've had such lovely weather. No snow. Hope it doesn't have bad weather when you come. It seems like it's almost spring. I've been working so hard taking the paint off the basement walls. It certainly is a messy job. Mark was acolyte again Sunday and is scheduled for a wedding, but will be in the Bahamas. They called him out of the congregation Sunday as they were short, and a woman told me what an elegant acolyte my son made. John is getting a money order tomorrow and will enclose it in this letter for $125 Canadian dollars for your airfare here in return. Hope all will go well with your trip and we'll hope to see you on the 17th. Good night. Love, John, Ruth, Mark, Pamela, Patty, and Peter. P.S. John has 20 cases coming up while we are away and also some in federal court. He'll have to face them on his return. The Sheraton British Colonial Hotel, Nassau, Bahamas, March 24, 1969. Hi, Mark, Pamela, and Mother. We're on the amphibian airplane to Sister and Key. Myrthella and little Stephen are also on the plane. Please bring the walkie-talkies. Get new batteries if they need them. Lots of luck. Love, Mother. 20689 Beechcliff Boulevard, Rocky River, Ohio. May 1st, 1969. Dear Mother, we were so glad to receive your letter and learn that you arrived home safely, although later than you anticipated. Hope that it wasn't too hard on you. Good that the weather was so nice to come home to. When we arrived home from the airport, the sun was shining. Pamela and Holly were arriving home from bowling. Patty and Sarah had just completed a lemon cake with lemon icing. And then the next day at church, it was so nice, the sun shining, that I wished that you'd stayed over. We had no idea of the strike and still have heard nothing except what that clerk said at the check-in when you left. So I guess you were lucky to make it home okay. Tuesday and Wednesday, I went to the luncheons at the Yacht Club. Nan Gregory picked me up for the Tuesday and Bobby Rudge for the Wednesday. Nan was sorry she hadn't had something bigger for you when she learned you stayed longer. They are in Hawaii now. The day before you left, both Patty and Peter seemed to be getting colds. Hope you didn't get it. I had Patty home a few days with a cough and now have Peter and Mark home and and I've been in bed. I seem to have a flu and cough and quite a nightmare, but today we all seem better. Good you weren't here. The strawbridges tree is all pink buds and the dogwood almost out. The forsythia is still pretty and many trees are out so pretty. The tulips out across the street. Pamela, Patty and Pamela are both in the finals for their spelling contest tomorrow. Patty for Kensington Elementary School and Pamela downtown as representative for Rocky River High School. I've gone over all the words with Patty and she knows all the 4th, 5th, 6th and junior high words, so hope she doesn't make a mistake. John has go- gone over all the junior high and high school words with Pamela, so hope she does well also. It's a much tougher competition. Doug Strawbridge's picture is in the newspaper today. He was a National Merit Scholarship winner, $500 a year for four years in college. His dad's company, 3M, who makes scotch tape, the Minnesota Mining and Manufacturing, is a big contributor to the fund, so he applied for that. Yesterday, we got a brochure offering us the Penny House on Elbow Key for sale for $40,000. Although John prefers Cistern Key, he likes the idea of the house already built, and it is a nice location, so he wrote about it. 
And today I got a telephone call that a house on Lake Erie on Avalon Drive is for sale, $85,000. I believe it's the one John likes. John's folks came over Sunday for the high school music concert, and then we went to the church smorgasbord, which was very good. John's mother said she thought you were so thin. John had noticed that she is so wide and much heavier. I didn't go over to the Negro school last week. Joanne said that there was some, there was some disturbance. They had all the blinds down, down of the kindergarten, and many parents came to take their children home. When she went to have the teacher and the principal escorted her to her car and directed her home by a different route. They asked her if she would return after that. John's mother doesn't think I should go there, says my first priority is to my own family. Thank you so much for the sweet pea seeds. Peter has already put two in water. He has things growing in glasses on all the windows of the house, even bird seed that's about six inches high. I guess he'll be the scientist of the family. Mark and Peter have just had a poker game. Mark won Peter's money, and I just heard him ask Peter to promise him never to gamble. He now owes Mark $3.91 and is paying by doing errands. John says that they had a luncheon for Kent Myers at the athletic club yesterday, and the doctor told Kent that they had left a sponge inside Kent after the first operation. That caused the second operation. When they opened him up, it exploded. It caused gangrene, and they had to remove two more feet of intestine. They shoveled the stuff off the operating table. What an awful shame to have caused him so much suffering, maybe his life. That will be a settlement not settled for some time and will be a big one. Take care, and God bless. We do thank you for taking care of Mark and Pamela and coming down to the Bahamas with them. Thank you, too, for all the lovely china that you've painted for us. We'll always cherish it. Good night. Love, Ruth. 20689 Beechcliff Boulevard, Rocky River, Ohio, May 5th, 1969. Dear Mother and Dad, Both your letters just arrived, and I am very glad to hear that all is well and that you are enjoying the afterglow of the trip. It is such a lovely place, Sister and Key, that I feel fortunate that we found it. I'll try to answer some of your questions, but many of our plans are nebulous just now. There are so many things to be considered. Each child has different activities at various times that it's a jigsaw puzzle to make everything fit. I'm still very weak and get dizzy and can't imagine what's wrong. I've had a bad cough and flu. John thinks I got overtired and the week we returned staying up watching the movies. Maybe it's all in my head as it seems overwhelming to see so much that needs to be done in cleaning and decorating. However, John has done so much. He cleaned out the garage, washed the floor, and got rid of so much that it looks a lot better. And John and Mark have done a lot in the yard, getting it in shape, reseeding areas, and John also washed down the porch and put out the rug and porch furniture from the recreation room. The dogwoods are all in full bloom, also the lilacs, and the weather is beautiful. Patty visited the Cleveland Press newspaper with her class this morning. While they were there watching the, the man showing how much ink was in the letters, her friend Mary Faulkner fainted. Daddy would be interested in her description of the trip and the operation. Peter went back to school after missing all week with his cough, and Mark is back but still has a deep cough and is on antibiotic. Pamela babysat the Rudges' three children late Friday night and Saturday night. She helped for several hours at church hanging the liturgical art show and then spent a couple of hours catalog cataloging the books in the church library Saturday. And Sunday afternoon, she was working on a math project with Holly Greger and some girls. They will teach the math at the high school with the principal watching. She went to the spelling contest Friday. There were 171 children from all areas of the city. In the first round, they were given 10 easy words, Pamela said, and if anyone had one or more wrong, they were out. She said to her amazement, about 100 were out. The second round, 50 more went out, including Pamela and her friend, Kay Morrow. She said they watched until there were only about five sparring. Patty has not officially heard, but thinks she was second or third. 
Both girls missed words they, that they knew. Both enjoyed participating. Pamela was extremely enthusiastic about it, and also the art show as she is about everything, usually. You'll remember that several years ago, Mark wanted to join the Cleveland Yachting Club, and he wanted to take sailing instructions and have a boat, as all his friends did. It was the in thing to do. We delayed the decision, and finally he decided it wasn't what he wanted, and he felt he was too old. He made cards and sold them to buy a boat, raising about $39 at age 11. Patty's friends are now at the stage where they are taking the junior activities or JA at the Yacht Club, and since she's been down with them, she thinks we ought to join the Cleveland Yachting Club. I mentioned it to John Saturday. He made inquiry. We've had the application in our drawer for years. The Gregory's offered to sponsor us years ago. There were still some openings in the program for Patty. Weber Collart, you were at Shirley's for a tea last year, is membership chairman, and he phoned when he heard John was interested and offered to get letters of recommendation for John. There is a waiting list at the Yacht Club for members. Dick Donaldson and Bill Rudge, you were at Bobby's for coffee, brought over letters, and John met the Gregory's at the airport on their return from Hawaii, and George signed the application. They all seem so pleased we are joining. Bill said John's the kind of member they need. Dick suggested John crew on his boat, and George put down that John is a crew member of his boat. John took Webb the $1,000 initiation fee check and their membership meeting is tonight, and he said they'd waive the credit check and we can consider us in. We are really on the waiting list, though, as the membership is limited to 500 and they only take in new ones as others leave and move. It can be as long as two years. However, Patty will go to her JA activities, another $175, and of course there are monthly dues and assessments, about $360 a year. All is double a few years ago when we first talked about it. So our man of action got us into the Yacht Club in two days after us thinking about it for years. I thought we should have had a family meeting as we usually do on major decisions, but John thought not. Pamela was roaring mad. She thought it just was satisfying Patty's whim and thought the money much better spent elsewhere. I pointed out her $1,000 bedroom set, but she thought it was more tangible. We finally had a meeting and she grudgingly consented. I think Nan Gregory can give Mark some private sailing lessons to catch up. Nan and Steve, Pam's age, are going into the business this summer. Also, John and Pamela, if she'll agree. Tomorrow morning at 8.30, we'll look at the house on the lake, $85,000. And we'll have to decide quickly as there are people seeing it right after us. And John is sure it will go quickly. It is quite modern. The only thing I don't like is that it is one mile from school and we do so like this location here now all in what you get used to. Also, Patty can ride her bicycle down to the Yacht Club. She will go every day from June 17th to August 1st and go from 8.30 a.m. until 4 o'clock p.m. and have a hot lunch there. Unfortunately, she will have to miss her orchestra, which is at 10 o'clock a.m., and her Girl Scout camp unless she goes in August. Both Mark and Pamela have Boy Scout and Girl Scout camps in August, which will conflict with our proposed trip west. The meeting in Colorado Springs is August 6th to 10th. Pamela's Girl Scout troop leaves for Michigan August 9th and Mark August 10th. We had talked of the possibility of going out earlier, but John thinks it's too big a trip for just a week. We would fly as he wouldn't consider driving that far again. Maybe a train or rent a car for Banff. So we will have to have another family meeting to make our decision. We also have to decide about the trip east. Barb and Bill Smith call that we are to be invited to Debbie's wedding in Falmouth, Maine, June 18th. Debbie is a classmate at Smith College of Julie Nixon, the daughter of President Richard Nixon. There are only five Ohioans invited. Barb is Harold's sister and Aunt Helen Lacey. So whether we just fly out for the day or spend a few days east, I don't know. Barb and Bill are driving Helen out. It will be a busy summer. As to your questions, John just called. They had an office meeting this morning, and John was to reassign Kent's cases when when in came Kent. He feels better, 
The wound is not closed yet, and he plans to return now on a limited basis for two weeks to work on his cases. Then they are going south, and he will bake for two weeks and try to recuperate, and then they will see how he is. I guess I told you about the sponge. What neglect! John said some surgical nurse who counts the sponges is going around with that over her head. But the doctor, who is a close friend of Kent's, is held responsible. John said he put his arms around Kent. He was so glad to see him. We have not heard from Crown Lands regarding Little Hawking or Chicken Keen, nor have we heard from Dr. Rummage. He might not like the idea of a path going by his house. There is the back path. We have heard from Mr. Grant, and he mentioned that back path. About the movies, in previous years we have talked about having a duplicate roll made as a Christmas gift, but didn't know if you'd be interested. John's camera and projector are our newer kind, but you may be able to rent one. The Gregories asked us to duplicate some a few years ago, and John gave them to them. I'm glad Janet likes the dress. We have a larger one like it, and when Patty has outgrown it, it will have a matching pair. Our girls wore them to the Bahamas, nice for traveling. Hope she can use some of the other things. So sorry you got tired carrying it all. I was very grateful you took them. I need about 200 more loads. I do hope that you tell Mrs. Crippen about the wonderful new drug for arthritis. It is a real breakthrough, and we saw a friend on the plane who had been so bad and given her a new lease on life. It's not one of the fake ones, but a wonderful discovery. I'll try to find out the name of it. John went to school with all sorts of gadgets, and the janitor, teacher, and principal all tried to help, but Patty's ring was gone, so we'll send for another. We still have not heard one word about your strike at Air Canada. A Miss Tear at St. Peter's yesterday said she'd been so glad to meet you. She is a next-door neighbor of John Small Shaw on Summit, Shar Street. She said she'd noticed our lovely family ever since we started at St. Peter's. When I came here 20 years ago, I met a girl who lived across the street from them, the Small Shaws at the Hearing and Speech Center. Wednesday, I'm feeling better, went to the colored school yesterday with Nan and Jean. Love, Ruth. The next letter is from John to... Um, uh, to Ruth's parents, Meyer Stevens and Ray, attorney at law, attorneys at law, the Superior Building, Cleveland, Ohio, May 15th, 1969. Dear folks, we thought you might enjoy having the, the, closed co- the enclosed copy of the back page, which, which contains the work of Rocky River High School freshman. Pam has several items in it. Love, John. Now, in 1970, Pamela was in the Girl Scouts. She received an award for uh, this fundraiser they were doing to raise money for the, tr- the, the Girl Scout troop trip to Mexico by selling geraniums. She sold more than a 1,000 geraniums and received a, 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 a plastic geranium that had been spray-painted gold. They called it the gold geranium. And this is the, what they said to her. There is one scout among us who stands out in the eyes of our scouting program. Throughout the year, she has worked diligently toward our troop goals, never giving in or avoiding work and always trying to do the best. She has spent long weekends of the year tramping over our city of Rocky River, selling hundreds of boxes of Girl Scout cookies, pushing sleds and sleds of newspaper, and collecting tons and tons of rummage. In her spare time, she is found in the library, settled deeply in Peace Corps magazines or international game books, or in deep conversation at her minister's office. She has displayed her many talents in our troop this year, such as winning national opportunities, playing her cello to the tune of the world song, twisting wires around pine cones, and licking stamps. And in these last few weeks before our long-awaited trip to Mexico, she has reached the greatest achievement of scouting today. She has been up countless days and nights for endless hours, adding, subtracting, and delivering to the far ends of the city her 1,003 geraniums. For all this, I am very proud to present the highest honor of Troop 1049 never before received to Pam Ray. I present the gold geranium. Now we have a letter to the editor based on the original publication from my father, John S. Ray. Dear Editor, 
What a lovely collection of family pictures on the front cover. Very surprised that you present this issue grudgingly. I remember the January 1969 boat trip with Kent and Betty Myers from Fort Lauderdale to Bimini, Bahamas, vividly. An extremely rough trip. Mark standing with the ministers and the bishop when Gil Hubble was ordained, an unusual event. Your mother, mother is seeing the shaft of light from above. Later, something happened to Gil Hubble. Last I heard, he was a night watchman at Sohio Building downtown. You children were all such good students at school. Wonderful. Kent Myers, stomach pains, cancer, started when we were on the trip to the Bahamas in January 1969. He was only 66 years old, a sponge left inside him after his first surgery, and a second surgery required. Good grief. I remember our garage floor on Beechliff Boulevard being completely covered with the 1,000 geranium plants which Pam sold for her Girl Scout troop, and which resulted in her receiving the Gold Geranium Award. Great. What a lovely picture of your mother in the Sun Herald at the bottom of the last page of this issue. Thank you for your good work. Love, Dad. John S. Ray, Rocky River, Ohio. To be continued. Well, the letters that my mother wrote, uh, there are no letters uh, from this time. This is in 1969 until uh, middle of sometime in 1975. I don't know what happened to those letters, but we do have a home movies for 1969, 1970, 1971, 1972, 1973, and 1974. So after this video, we will be showing th those and then resuming with my mother's letters in 1975. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. God bless you. Take care, and I'll see you next time.